everyone and welcome to Power Apps Roadmap. Today we are going to be looking at using Microsoft Power Apps to build a board game. Power Apps has lots of business functions but sometimes it's fun just to explore how else you can use these tools. And this is part one of two and today we are going to be building a game board and um, functioning dice system for snakes and ladders. So we're going to start off from a blank screen here and the first thing that we want to do is add in a new blank vertical gallery and let's get this positioned we're going to move this to the right hand side of our screen and um, I'm going to set the size to be um, roughly a square because we need to fit in our 10 by 10 grid um, and let's set our position to 6, 2, 5, 32 that's going to sit nice in the middle there great and I'm going to set the background colour um, uh, for the items for our gallery we want to replace that, the custom gallery sample with a new array of uh, the numbers 1 through to 100 because these are going to uh, be our game squares and then inside the gallery um, let's insert an item and we want to insert a label and I'm going to set the size on this one to 67 and our key here is we want to change the wrap count. So by setting the wrap count to 10, we now have uh, the ability to list numbers 1 through 10 in a row, and then the next row of 10 drop to the row below that. And we're setting the, sc the size of our um, item uh, for template to be small enough to fit all 10 uh, columns in and all 10 rows. So let's Make sure we're targeting our label and we want to set the background to white. Uh, let's add a border of 2 pixels. We can make it black. And let's center and at least semi bold. And then it's just about updating, it's just about changing the size of your gallery item so that your game board looks right. And let's add a border the outside of the whole gallery as well just so that it definitely stands out okay great so we have our game board um, I am going to make this bold and we want to add in a couple icons which are going to be our player pieces so make sure we're inside our gallery and let's add icons and I'm going to add, I'm going to add a circle for each of these here you can tell that it's inside the gallery um, because it's repeated, so let's grab the start red, which will be our player one, move it into position. So I'm going to add a red icon and then let's just duplicate that one. And we'll move it up to be alongside it. And then we'll change the colour on this one to blue. And this will be our player two. So let's name these, um, player 2, player 1, and game tile. So we've set this up so that our player pieces appear on every single tile, but we only want to show them when the player has landed on that particular tile. So let's check out the fill command control the fill control uh, for this icon let's grab player one and select fill so for our markers we're going to set the fill to an if statement if this item dot value which will be the numbers one through 100 is equal to the last red number then color the uh, fill the icon in red if not fill it in zero 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 with zero uh, alpha in the alpha channel so make it entirely see-through and on the blue one 
um, if this item dot value is equal to the last blue number, then update the RGB value to this blue, otherwise make it transparent, RGB A0000. So now we need to test this by setting our last red and last blue values. So let's add in another icon here, which will be our frame. Stretch it out to fill the space. And let's make it that with a border of three. Great. And we're going to add a button in here and under one and the center just now we'll call this we'll add the text roll to this button. When this button is clicked we're going to roll the dice to ge and generate a random number between one and six and assign both of the button uh, both of the icons to that uh, number. So our formula looks like this. Set last number to the round with zero decimal places of random number times by five plus one. That's going to ensure that any number we get is definitely between one and six and is rounded down to zero decimal places. And then we're going to set our variable last red number to last number and set last blue number to last number as well. And if I preview this, let's click here. You can see this, the number must have returned to five and both of the icons have moved to over to five. Roll again, two, roll again, three, three again, six, five, six, three, six. So it's never going any higher than six. It's never going below one. Great, so we now, we now know that that is working. So let's add in another label here and we're going to group all these together in a minute. But we want to be able to establish what it was that was just rolled. So let's set our text wrap there and we'll wrap this up a little bit and set it to 18 and bold because it's kind of important. And we'll set this to our variable number uh, and again test it five five three six two three so we are going to work on the basis of this as a two-player game uh, and we're only going to need to switch between two players so let's add in a toggle and we'll center it here and a little bit that we want to fill up we want to work with here. We're going to set colors, hide the label, red move, blue move. And we want to set the default on this to a variable called set toggle. And this is going to control whether this is true or false. Okay, so before we get too far into the formulas here, let's update our uh, elements by naming them all. So this is going to be our roll button. Um, this label we want to set to our roll value. And we're going to call this toggle button our um, move toggle. As it's going to establish which, which tile it's going to move. Um, and you know what else I want to add at this point, I also want to add in another button down the bottom of the screen here and this is going to be a reset. Okay, so let's go back into our roll button function and now we want to figure out what our move toggler is set to. So if move toggler dot value equals false, which we now know is, which we know is red. Then we want to set a red position to be the same as the last red number. And we want to set red roll to the last number. And finally we want to set set toggle to true. To that's going to make the toggle switch to blue, which is the case we're going to cover now. 
uh, sort of else in the event that it um, moved to our value is true or that it's set to blue, we want to set blue position to last blue number. We want to set blue row to last number. And we want to set set toggle back to false. So let's take this out here because we want to control um, we want to control these from the start of the game. Um, so let's head down to a reset button and click on the farm the on select. And we're going to set a bunch of the variables that I just mentioned. Uh, I want to set last red number, last blue number, a red position, blue position, red roll and blue roll. And I want to set most of them to zero, but last red number and last blue number we're going to set to one, which is our starting piece. So we know that clicking on this resets. So we know that one is the selected tile for both of our items here. Great, so now we are going to need to add in a, a timer. Well, this is going to help us animate our icons. So I'm going to set this to update every 200 milliseconds. I want it to repeat and I want it to auto start. And we are going to use the variables that we've set previously, both in roll and in reset, and we want to update them gradually so that it makes so that we're adding on from the current position and uh, the, the value that's just been rolled so we are going to go to the on timer end and the formula that we're going to use here is if when the timer ends last red number is less than red position plus red roll set last red number to last red number plus one and similarly if last blue number is equal is less than blue position plus blue rule set last blue number to last blue number plus one now to talk through this Every 200, sec every 200 milliseconds, we are going to evaluate if the last red number is less than our red position plus the red roll, so our current position plus what we've just rolled. And if it is, then we want to set the last red number to the last red number plus one. So that will continue to loop around every 200 milliseconds and add one to our last red number value until it's equal to our red position plus red roll, which is going to be our um, new position. So we can re re ready to demo this. Let's move into preview. So both our icons are both our uh, we've reset everything, so both our markers are back to one, and we're set to the red roll. Let's roll the dice for the first time. We roll a three. One, two, three. It's changed over to blue's turn. Click roll. It rolled a five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's roll again. It's moved three places. The only way that this differentiates from your typical um, snakes and ladders board is typically you'd work from the bottom left along and then up and then back. And instead we're moving along and and then down and immediately back to the left. Um, it is possible to do it the other way. You can assign the numbers, uh, you can create an array. 
It's absolutely possible to make this work more like a traditional snakes and ladders board. You would just assign yourself two numbers uh, to your array. One of them would control the number that you're displaying and the other one would control the order. So um, your order would be these numbers but the display number you would pick number um, 11 would you would assign the display number of 20 and number 20 you would, as display, uh, you would assign the display number of 11 and uh, you would do your calculations based on the display number not the value uh, of the of the item uh, I'm doing it this way just to show how you can get started with this great so now we have um, this up and running we want to add in a screen that will alert us to when somebody has hit 100 so let's go back in and we're going to add in one label to the middle of our screen here and let's stretch out to be, uh, to be a take up a large part of the screen and I'm going to set it to um, be very in your face and we want to change the text to say congratulations you are the winner and we also want to up the font size so let's pick 48 for this one and we're going to change to the handwritten which is a little bit more fun and we're going to set the visible to the variable winner that we're going to create in a second here so let's add this uh, to a reset and now we want to update our so the two lines of formula that we want to add here is an if statement that says if last blue number is equal to 100 set winner to true and if last red number equals 100 set winner to true uh, and that's going to keep an eye on uh, the position of our marker and when it lands on 100 um, it's going to display that that piece has won the game now uh, I know that there are rules that you have to land exactly on 100 and we're going to cover that along with the actual snakes and ladders in part 2. So let's reset our game and take a look at what we have here. In part 2 we're going to cover adding in snakes and ladders and also deal with the, uh, the rule that you need to land exactly on 100 to win. You can't roll um, a 6 when you're 2 uh, spots away and still win. But let's take a little look. Our game is running through really nice. Uh, I will probably fast forward until we're closer to the end here. Okay, so here we are uh, near the end of the game. It's ready to roll and now whenever we roll this, presumably it's going to take us up to past 100 and we get the pop-up to say that we have won so let's reset and everything goes back to the start so like I said in part 2 we're going to cover adding in the actual snakes, the actual ladders and uh, making a rule so that you need to roll the exact amount needed to get to 100 in order to win um, thank you for watching uh, like, share, subscribe and um, I'll see you guys again shortly for part two. Thanks.